hindi po joke ang ating first forum ngayong umaga, ang mga bigaten. And it's my honor to be uh, the one moderating this for you. It's all about upscaling our business, taking our businesses to the next level. I would like to begin with our uh, bigaten ladies. Of course, pagsabihin yung SM, pagsabihin yung Eurotex, at pagsabihin yung Belo. Lahat alam yan, tama? So, simulan natin sa kanila. <laughs> so, ladies, uh, particularly first, I'd like to go to Dr. Vicky. You started your own business. You never had a mentor. Am I right? Um, not a formal mentor. Pero siguro naman ang dami nag-mentor sa akin. I'm a very curious person. Eh. So, lagi ako nagtatanong ng mga successful people, paano mo ginawa to, ganyan. Pero, Alam mo, sa medical school, talagang zero ang business subject. So, wala talaga ka akong kaalam-alam about business. But I like how you started it. Curiosity. Nagtatanong-tanong. Ganun diba? talaga. At saka, need. Kasi ang, ang business ko, nag-umpisa po, dahil nung bata po ako, um, ang tabata ba ako? <laughs> At saka, um, I was adopted. So, parang yung kapatid ng nanay ko, pinami pinamigay ako sa nanay ko. Anyway, belo. So, dati kansyo ako. Ngayon, pag nasa school ako, kuminsan binubuli ako ng mga ibang babe, mga five-year-old. Ba't ka pinamigay? So, sasabihin naman ng isang bata, kasi ang taba-taba niya eh. Tapos sasabihin ng isang, hindi, kasi pangit siya. So, actually, yung business ng belo, nag-umpisa dahil, nung five years old ako, naisip ko, pag mataba ka pala at pangit ka, pinamimigay ka. So sabi ko, ay, ang gagawin ko sa buhay ko, papagandahin ko lahat ng tao, at saka pa, mag, gagawin ko sexy lahat ng tao para hin, mamahalin sila at hindi ipamimigay. Okay ba yung Tagalog ko? Try it. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Dr. Vicky. It goes to show, kahit po nagsa-struggle kayo, kahit naghihirap, kahit binubuli kayo, you can use that as an inspiration to start your own business as early as five years old. That was already planted in her head. But this is where it gets also another dimension. To Miss Tessie, of course, your father was the one who established SM. To have had it uh, minana, dahil, uh, of course, it's a family business. Uh, was he a mentor to you? It Was it both a privilege and, of course, pressure? Tama po ba, Miss Tessie? Yes, he was a mentor, and the best mentor is pressure. Bo, tama nga. Pressure. Yes, it's a pressure. And of course, you learn from everyone in the organizations. And uh, it's, it's true, you can learn from everyone. Uh, but my, uh, the mentors that I really look up to uh, is my father. Here's the thing. In a corporation like yours, Ms. Tessie, hindi lang isa. Like you said, you can learn from everyone. Hindi lang isa ang pakikinggan. And even when you took it on, when you did you find yourself uh, rising the ranks? Or were you given a top managerial position from the very beginning? For me, I started early. I started as an uh, inventory clerk and a cashier. But the thing is, we were just a small family business. So through the years, you learn through uh, you learn the rope, and you be, you actually take more and more responsibility, and that's how you learn. There you go. Also very much like uh, Dr. Vicky, yes. where you took it on. Na ikaw mismo yung gumagawa. I, I think responsibility is also a good mentor. Pressure and responsibility. So those uh, with those behind you, you will have to really work and learn. And hindi excuse dahil COO, child of owner. No. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. You, no, have no. To, you have to learn the rope. You have to be, be respected as the one uh, leading them. Earn your stripes pa rin. Thank you very much, Miss Tessie. I'd like to go to Miss Natty, of course, of Eurotex. Another one who started from the beginning and started from the one, again, like cashier, uh, inventory girl, kayo rin po, Miss Natty. That's how you started Eurotex with your husband. Am I right? Um, kami, galing sa pamilya mahirap. Uh, tulad na ibang Pilipino, uh, gusto lang namin yung mga tambuhay namin. Ngay 
ngayon, after high school, nakapagtrabaho ko sa office as secretary. Diyan ako natuto. At noong nag-asawa kami ng ano, with 4,000 pesos capital, nag-ubisa kami mag-asawa, mag-trading muna. Yun yung pinakamadali. Yun ang pinakamadaling trabaho, mag-trading, yun ang negosyo. Um, Nagtsaga kami, lahat ng kinikita namin, from kahit na isang libo kikita namin, basta ang gagasusin namin, mga dalong daan piso lang, para makaipon kagat. Lahat ng trabaho, gagawin namin. Asawa ko, tatrabaho ng as driver. Ako, kahit ako magpakarga ng truck na ayusin maigi para sulit ang delivery. Lahat ng tipid, ginawa namin yan. Hanggang nakaroon kami ng opportunity, kulang ang foam sa Pilipinas, ang ginawa namin, sinubukan namin bumili ng makina Machine. galing sa Taiwan. Diyan kami nagbibisa gumawa ng foam. From foam, nagpipit kami, lahat ng binigay namin magandang produkto sa customer namin, uh, nakisama kami sa mga supplier, nakaipong kami, saka kami bumili mga high-tech na makina. Um, kailangan lang natin talaga sipag, eh, tiyaga, at tipit para makaipon tayo. At importante rin, kailangan sulit ang pagbibigay natin sa mga empleyado natin, mga customer, kailangan kontento, at yung mga supplier, hindi natin din pakisamahan natin, huwag tayo magdaya sa kapwa natin. Wow, thank you. Again, let's give her three ladies. I'm just starting. Ha? I want you to know where they came from. I want to touch on something Miss Natty said. The word tipid. Does that apply, Miss Tessie, to you? I, I'm looking at Dr. Vicky. Nagtipid ka ba? The word tipid to start out. Applicable, of course. I'm being uh, from inventory to cashier, or you handled cashier. Yeah, we we tipid. were very frugal. Okay. Frugal talaga. So yes, key ang pagtitipid. Uh, yeah, kailangan, uh, kailangan matipid because you have to really uh, control the cost. Dr. Vicky, nagtipid ka ba? <laughs> Alam mo, parang hindi nag-work para sa akin maging matipid. Kasi whenever I, I try to save and be thrifty, parang nawawala yung pera ko, either nananakawan ako or something, naloloko ako. So parang ang... I feel na iba-iba ang mga tao. For me, parang ang ganda ng negosyo ko kasi kasama naman sa negosyo yung, yung you have to look good so kailangan bumili ng mga clothes. Of course, nagtipid ako in the sense na dapat lagi mas malaki ang in-earn ko kaysa ginagasos ko. So, ang rule ko sa buhay, um, 50% of what I earn, I can spend and 50% dapat i-save or invest, reinvest. Pero yung talagang tipid na tipid na ano, parang hindi, hindi bagay sa akin. So, It didn't work. <laughs> But it just really comes from all different backgrounds, di ba? That's what makes each business unique. Now, to scale from that, again, now that we know the background stories, ang lalaki na, wala nang single billboard, wala nang single municipality, city, na hindi nakikita ang mga produkto, building, office ninyo. How did you make it? Of course, it's not overnight. How can you make it that way for our students particularly to understand the journey. So again, from especially on a management perspective, to scale up. From Miss Nati, nakabili ka na ng makina. Dr. Vicky, it didn't start from one clinic. You actually mushroomed quite big. My first clinic actually was 40 square meters. Maliit lang po. Pero ang ginawa ko, kasi one thing about me, I'm an only child, So ayoko maging katulad ng iba. So ayoko, never ako nagfa-follow kung anong gusto ko mauna. So yung time na yon ang dinala ko dito, laser. Wala pa kasi mga laser no 1908, 1990. So kahit yung pera ko, kung anong mang puhunan ko, ininvest ko sa technology. Kahit yung clinic ko maliit at saka hindi naman ganoon kaganda, at least yung equipment ko sobrang modern. So, may, may unique selling proposition, oh, di ba? Business Ayon. term. So, yun ang, <laughs> ayun ang business card. Uni But, uh, so, makina, laser. Makina din yun. So, it's investment on uh, equipment. Miss Tessie, you went into banking? Was that how you managed to scale it up? No, no. In the 
Don, don sa retail, we expanded because after, uh, after one store, you would like to expand your business. There's always an itchiness to expand. Uh, from the banking naman, the banks, uh, we started a small, a very small bank because that is supposed to be our cashier, parang, uh, or, or treasurer. Um, because what we do is, whatever we earn, we have a lot of coins that time. And the big banks do not like to deal with us. So it came from a need, a need to have a small bank to get all the coins, change it to bigger bills or, or you know, electronic. That, that time there's such a thing as uh, some automation. Then you deposit with the bigger banks. It started as a need. So we, were, we started with only four branches at that time. And so it serves our Mga about four branches of, uh, of uh, department store as well. So malit pa, malit pa kami. But it was, it, it, it came from a need. And after that, so we grow, uh, we grow to not serving only SM. So we went into 18 branches, 23, and the rest is history. And I love how you focused on coins. Ito yung mga hindi pinapansin, pang commute nyo lang yan, di ba? Yun nga yung ini, tina, tinatabi-tabi lang sa bahay na yeah. hindi pinapansin and people, yet you, you got people that. People call us the 5 and 10 cent store. You know, that's American. But uh, 5, you know, ang, in, ang iniipo namin is 5 centavos, 10 centavos. Those are were how we started. There you go. Again, from small to huge. We're going to get back to that now because I want to now focus the spotlight on some of our newer entrepreneurs. And I want to ask Georgina and Anne, and even Miss Murley about this. Having heard the very humble, with the exception of Dr. Vicky, <laughs> well, 40 square ano naman, clinic una. Having heard the humble beginnings, or how uh, our conglomerates here rose from where they started, would you consider yourselves, Anne and Georgina, small startups or no? Um, I would consider us, first, good morning po, Madlang Filipinas. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, I would still consider us uh, very small. We're still a baby business. We're only five months old. Um, very humble. Uh, there are five of us only as partners who each have a role. Uh, sobrang liit lang ng budget po namin na nag-start kami for BLK Cosmetics. Um, just to test lang, mag-work ba to? Kaya ba namin mag-compete with the bigger uh, cosmetic lines in the industry, foreign and also local? Uh, so, parang testing waters pa, mabibenta ba kami? Kaya ba? Um, and in five months, uh, doon namin napatunay na parang kaya pala. So, umiikot lang yung na-invest namin. Wala pa kaming in earn naglabas lang kami ng konting uh, puhunan. Um, and dun po siya nag grow So, very humble. Maliit lang. Off the bat, five months, Miss Tessie, Miss, uh, Dr. Vicky, and uh, Miss Natty, no one's gonna get their money back in five months, right? For sure. For sure. That's why it's a start. Yes. What about Georgina? Do you consider yourself a small business? Uh, definitely. Good morning, everyone. And now we got a people. Um, Definitely still a small business. Um, you know, like all the other stories, we, we've been around for five years and um, everything was really done by us. You know, I have three other business partners and sometimes talaga, when you're an entrepreneur, you find yourself doing things like, Ako ba talaga to? like I found it very uh, humbling. And you know, like when we opened our first store in Moa, um, I was really the one fixing the glasses. I would sweep the floor. And you know, now we've grown from four, from four people in the company. Now we have about over 400 people. Wow. But the great thing is, I know how, when they ask, how should I do this? Or, paano ba to? Alam ko kasi ginawa ko. You know, like I think the experience really is the best teacher. I think it's interesting because I have a business degree, but parang the five years in business has taught me things that I would have never learned in school. Which I, I mean, I don't knock that. Like, I love my time at school, but experience is the best teacher. So I would definitely consider myself small. And 
What's also great about starting small is lahat ng achievements and lahat ng mga wins is, you know, like as simple as from going to our office of 40 square meters and every, every way you grow, you appreciate it so much. As simple as having a company secretary, I'm like, wow, I don't have to go to the bank anymore to do it. You know, that's great. You know, I think each thing means so much more because we really started small. And um, yeah. So starting small definitely means you practice it. Kayo yung gumagawa. Everyone here echoes, kayo yung gumagawa. But I hope you forgive me for saying this. I loved how I phrased it as small time business, but ang kiosks nila, SM Mall of Asia, <laughs> SM Department Store, <laughs> ba? you're there. I'd like to then put the spotlight on Miss Murley. Why I use the word small business is Miss Murley started with a Sari Sari store in Sorsogon. Tama po ba, Miss Murley? At from that Sari Sari store, ilang hektaryo na ang nasa pangalan mo dahil pinalago mo ang business mo sa Pili Oil and Pili Nuts. Uh, magandang umaga po sa lahat. Um, ako po, galing po sa pinakaliblib na lugar ng Bicol, kung saan po, sa Santo Nino Bacon District, Sorsogon City. Hindi ko po akalain na ako ay makarating dito. Ang mga kasama ko po ay mga artista at mga bigating malalaki na po na negosyo. Ako po ay talagang, uh, pero sabi ko, kayang-kaya ko to. Uh, Nakumpisa po ako sa maliit na sari-sari store. Uh, dahil po sa pagpuporsigi ko po at pag pagdadasal na sana lumaki ang aking maliit, yun. Tapos gumawa talaga po ako ng paraan Pero pili na plano ko po yung gumawa pa ako ng banig. Bumibili ako ng pili. Hanggat sa nangungutang po ako sa mga kaibigan ko kapatid. Inubos-ubos ko na po ma'am. Ah, hanggang sumali, sumali po ako sa isang micro and micro finance. Yung SEDP or Simbag sa Pag-asinso Incorporated po sa Ligastri. Ah, doon po, kum, nag umutang pa ako ng puhunan para bang lumalaki na po yung aking business at talagang sipag at tiyaga. Yun, hanggang ngayon, uh, yun pa rin, nadagdagan po yung isang yung lana kang pili or pili palm oil. Yun po ang gusto ko po na mabigyan malaking market para yung mga, yung mga kababayan ko po, matulungan ko po sila. Again, from Sari Sari store to her own Pili Nut, Pili Palm Oil business. Hindi mo na natanasagot yung tanong ko, ilang hektaryo na ang pag-aari mo? Uh, Maliit pa lang naman. <laughs> Ibig sabihin po, more than one hektar na. O, oh, more than one. Sa kanya na yon. From 2,000 pesos of a Sari Sari store, pinalago ni Ma'am Merli. Okay, there are two ladies here that have been relatively quiet yet because I really wanted to get all the entrepreneurial beginnings out first. However, dito na pupunta ang real meat ng ating diskusyon, ang mentoring. So I would like to focus on our two ladies, Ms. Lizzie and Ms. Clarissa, who has something to say about Teach for the Philippines. At hindi lang po to, uh, school. It's not a school. Miss Lizzie, what would you like to share with us about Teach for the Philippines, especially with the ladies who are next to you about businesses and entrepreneurship? Thank you, Isa. Good morning to everyone. Um, Clarissa and I have come to join this panel and we're flattered that we were included because I believe we're the only NGO on the panel. But NGOs are also entrepreneurs and to initiate a social enterprise like ours, takes the same kind of spirit and the same drive and grit. But I appreciate that Joey and his team um, have included us. Uh, Teach for the Philippines is part of a 48 country network um, called Teach for All. And what we do is we 
go to universities and we recruit um, recent graduates and what we call returning professionals, sometimes young people who've tried the private sector and want to uh, try out the public sector. And we recruit them, we train them, and we place them in a two-year program in the public schools throughout the Philippines. We work in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And um, we work in over 12 municipalities. Um, and when it comes to mentoring, mentoring has been a huge part of what we do at Teach for the Philippines. There's a, what I call a, a two-layered mentoring program at Teach for the Philippines. One is mentoring the public school teachers, trying to help them articulate their goals. Um, and once they have a clear vision, helping pair them with a mentor who has the experience to help them get to those goals, to overcome the obstacles along the way and make the decisions that get you from point A to point B. But we also mentor our staff. And because we believe in the concept of mentoring as it's the second part of your education. Practical experience also. Practical experience. And it's very scary to be an entrepreneur like Vicky and Anne and Georgina and Nati. You know, it, there are a lot of moments where you don't have the experience and it's so helpful to be able to call someone and ask a question and help out. Anne was introducing us to her mentor. Georgina was saying that although she'd gone to business school, um, a lot of what she gained in her business was through calling Vicky and Tessie and, and using their experience to make decisions. And we believe in that at Teach for the Philippines. So we mentor our teachers. We mentor them also in leadership um, so that they can become leaders in their chosen fields after our two-year program. Parang passing the torch. Yes. But to be able to get this opportunity, you first have to commit to teach in public schools for two years. Am I right, Ms. Correct. Lizzie Clarissa? Yes, absolutely. And um, just to speak to Lizzie's point, mentorship makes a big part of the Teach for the Philippines program. Lizzie is my own mentor, and I think one thing I learned from her, as well as being the only, uh, or the, the sole representative for the social enterprise community in the Philippines, which is growing, is that I learned that you didn't need to wait until the end of your career to be useful to the Philippines. That you could be, um, and you could find a way to serve uh, the people, as well as come up with your own business. And I think that's an important role um, that we all share on the stage. We all do something for the country, and that we don't need to wait until um, we retire to do it, that we can be, and we can matter now, up front. So, imagine you to, fresh grad kayo. Siyempre, pag fresh grad, saan ba ako pupunta? May mag apply pa ako sa mga opisina, matatanggap ba ako? Ay, ang liit ng sahod. Right? Those are the questions of fresh grads. But, with this particular Teach for the Philippines program, may idea ka na kung saan mo gusto pumunta, Nakakaserbi magbibigay serbisyo ka sa country dahil magtuturo ka sa public schools. And of course, think basic subjects. Ha? Hindi nyo kailangan maging collegiate level na teacher. Think basic subjects. Math, language, science. Of course, may mentor din kayo. Then, from that two-year course, may elevate kayo sa parang inner circle ng mga Tessie, Dr. Vicky, Miss Nati, Georgina, and ayan, Miss Merly. Elevate kayo sa mga taong na-expose na, na, uy, gusto ko mag-retail, uy, gusto ko mag-banking, uy, gusto ko mag-pili uh, nuts, gusto ko mag-cosmetics. You will be connected? Am I right, Miss Lizzie? Yes. Miss Clarissa? I, I hope I'm saying yes, this right. We, we, we seek to pair, in the second year of the program, we seek to pair our young teacher fellows with mentors who um, have expertise in the fields that they're interested in. Sometimes it's at uh, the government level, and sometimes it's public sector, sometimes it's the private sector. And it's very valuable, very valuable for them to be able to have someone who's shaping and forming the way they 
think about their career, their goals, and how to overcome the obstacles along the way. And I like how it's very practical. It's giving service and practical because like Georgina said, she took up business. Pero it didn't teach you as much as nung ikaw ang nag ayos ayos mismo ng mga sunglasses mo sa Mall of Asia. Yeah, definitely. But um, it's not like it wasn't useful. I'll always value education. Education pa rin yun. Always. But I just don't think I'd survive without mentors. I mean, every like listening um, to us talking about mentorships, it's really making me reflect on how now that may business ako, every time I meet somebody else with a business, you can look into their eyes and say, you know, you know what I'm going through too, you know, no matter what size of your business, from the smallest to, you know, like, I'm sure Tessie wakes up every day sometimes, like, sometimes I actually think, how does Tessie do it? You know, yeah. <laughs> how, if I'm stressed, like, how does she do it? But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all human beings and we'll face challenges along the way. And, and it's funny when you talk about um, issues and problems because they come every day. It's just nonstop. I was even thinking to myself while thinking about what I wanted to say here, apparently it's easier to have a kid than a company. <laughs> like Actually, the, most like if not My child is so behaved. Uh -uh. <laughs> and you know, it's, I mean, it's so rewarding. I would never have it any other way, but my gosh, it's the mental drain daily. It's, it's like I never switch off. So I think that's also something that you have to be fully prepared for when you enter a business. Parang lifetime commitment siya. I'm sure everyone can relate to that, that there's really this, you have to go into it full-heartedly and um, regularly meet with people that inspire you. So, I mean, I regularly go to Vicky's house and we just talk about what are we gonna do next, you know? And we bounce off each other and I think that I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you can learn from any, any age, whatever size of the business, it's all about uh, sharing those experiences and really empowering and supporting each other. Oh, let's, that, let's do that now. That's why we have quite the panel. Kita mo pa paano sila nakaupo, eh, no? Halata ba ko sino mentors in one side and the babies in another? Can I just say something, though? Okay, yes, Dr. Vicky. Okay, so for Georgina and Anne are part of the Bello family. Pero yung mentoring kasi ang, ang idea, mga more senior, nagtuturo sa mga junior. Pero in this day and age, napaka-importante na matuto rin kami from, the, from them. Mm -hmm. Kasi when Georgina comes to the house, it's not so much mentoring. Sabi nga niya, we're bouncing ideas. Kasi she understands, di ba our population is young? I don't know exactly what it is, but I know our population's bata. So ang nakakaintindi sa mga bata, ay mga bata. So lagi ko silang tinatanong, kunyari, ang Belo, 28 years na, tagal na rin, di ba? But how do we keep Belo fresh? How do we keep Belo young? How do we make it relevant sa mga tao, lalo na may Belo Essentials na nasa fast-moving consumer goods? So tinatanong ko naman tong si Anne, tinatanong ko si Georgina, what are they like? What do they think? Anong kailangan nila? Anong mga concerns sila? So, mentoring, nagme-mentor rin sila sa akin. I like that, that it's a two-way street. And since Dr. Vicky started it na, I was about to go from here to there, pero sige, pag na, the other way around. Because this is something also Miss Tessie and I were saying in the behind, behind when we were prepping for this. Miss Tessie, you were saying the way to the future is definitely something the ball is in their court. This is technology, online, how everything is online nowadays. Yes. Um, they are, you see the customer today is not, uh, our customers today are not the customers tomorrow. So we need people like them to really go uh, to serve the customers of tomorrow. Um, what Georgina has been discussing, those are the basic of starting a business. Uh, we all go through it, all of us. Uh, the hardships that she encountered are the same hardships that we encounter as well. So it's no different. You just have to be involved, just have to be passionate. I, I think she's very passionate about it. So going forward, she has the digital, uh, she uses a digital platform and so does Anne. She, they have the, they know how to, uh, how to sell to the customers of tomorrow. 
with Merle. Uh, Merle is starting, and I think, you know, starting from, from scratch, that's even going further, that's very difficult, but still she made it. So when you, uh, and like Natividad and also uh, Vicky, I guess we all have experienced the same hardship before, but it is fulfilling. When the business is small, it's fulfilling. So when we have a little something, then we can go with uh, Teach for the Philippines. Thank, thank you for that. Miss uh, Nati, can you, uh, do you find that Eurotex also as your business has ridden this uh, millennial wave of doing business online? Even though our kumpanya namin, 50 years na itong taon na to, uh, patuloy ang innovation namin, um, nag-acquire kami ng new technology para lahat yung mga kailangan mga bago kabataan ngayon, masasupply namin. Lahat ang produkto na isip na import nila, available na dito sa Pilipinas. So again, it's an investing, it's still continuous now. You look towards the patterns that the young ones are setting and yeah. apply it to your already established businesses. Yeah, we, we need the digital aspect for the business. And uh, that is where both of us can really learn from them. However, where they can learn from you, now let me turn the tables. Uh, may na mention, this is always the concern of any particular business. Nasabi ni Ms. Merle, Nangungutang siya. Pondo. Lalo na, if you want to upscale, to, to scale up, kailangan ng equipment. Always on equipment. And, uh, Georgina, did you find yourselves having to spend or shell out for equipment or for just rent? I mean, how does it go for your particular businesses? Um, well, uh, definitely we had to spend on a lot of things. And I think one of the biggest costs that need to be managed um, is inventory. So that, that takes a lot of investment and we really grew that small. We put money in and we said, well, our vision was to completely change the kiosk experience. This was five years ago and we spent way too much money on the kiosk, but it worked for us because it, you know, revolutionized that experience. Um, so it was definitely the stores cost a lot of money and the inventory and, you know, as you grow, more and more money is trapped in that. So I think behind any business, um, the success of any business is managing your cash flow. Um, that's something that you have to be on top on daily. Especially, you were just saying about that you get stress every time the salaries come and you're like, yeah, that, that, that is huge. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's not actually, I think office rent should be kept at the minimum is minimum. And it's really, you're spending on your product and the experience. Okay, that, that's for uh, Sunnies. What about Anne? For BLK, I would have to say it's the same thing uh, in terms of inventory. Inventory. But that's where mentorship has helped me a lot. Because knowing my personality, I want this. I want my product to look like this. But my mentor, Jack Gutierrez, who is um, well known already in the cosmetic industry, was the one who mentored me that in a business, you can't always shell out so much. You have to stay within the limits of what you can spend and make everything work and go around. And, um, but that's why it's a whole learning experience for me. Um, I would have to say, yes, we did invest, we did shell out because um, be coming into the cosmetic industry, you want your brand to stand out and make that first impact remember memorable to others. Um, so it's all a learning and educating experience for me. That's why I'm very grateful that I have a mentor in my life, such as Jack, who is backstage, I'm sure cheering me on somehow. Um, but that's why it's very important for that you find, when you're starting a company, you find someone who will discipline you, who is who knows the background in the industry that you're starting in, para makontrol niya, para hindi ka malugi, hindi ka mabaon sa utang, uh, kailangan meron nag-guide po sa inyo. That's why it's very important that you find key people in your team and in your company who know what they're doing, especially for someone like me. I don't have a degree in business, but I'm very passionate about cosmetics, and that's the field that I chose. So, napaka-importante po, when you have a dream, you have a vision, 
Huwag niyong isipin na kaya niyong gawin yun mag-isa. Dapat meron kang mentor, dapat meron kang team um, who know the, the industry that you want to um, delve in. To Miss Merle, because I like how both of you already said inventory for sunnies, again, uh, eyeglasses and cosmetics. Miss Merle, sa pili nuts, because dating iko yung supplier lang, de ba? Problema, nagiintay ka na may mag-order ng demand bago ka kumita, and you found that too slow. So you became iko mismo naghanap na ng sarili mong buyer. Tama po ba? Opo, ma'am. Ako pa ang naghanap ng sarili kong buyer. Yung aking produkto, ako ang nagpo-produce, ako pa pa ang ma-market. Ngayon po, meron na pa akong market yung sa SEDP, Multipurpose Cooperative. Doon lang po yun sa Bicol and mga employee po doon sa SEDP. So ngayon, gusto ko po na makakuha ng direct buyer para lumaki na po yung aking production Siyempre po, pag mayroon akong mababagsakan po noon, yung mga taga roon sa amin, mabibili ko na po lahat yung kanilang products, pera yung aking ginagawa. Pa, yun, para hindi, hindi na po sila masyad, ma, medyo maangat po yung kanilang kabuhayan sa aming lugar. At mga, kata, mga katabi pa namin, mga barangay. I think that's something we'd like to hear from everybody because that's the nature of a business. You always want someone to consume and buy your products. So I want this uh, as everybody to, to go for it. Georgina, from Georgina to Miss Tessie. Well, of course, Miss Tessie would be the different scale. But how do you find your buyers? How do you find and connect to your consumer? Georgina. Well, connecting with our consumers was kind of the core of our business. I think five years ago already seems like a long time because when we launched, we were one of the first brands to completely launch on a digital platform. No physical store. So, no, 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 but we, we would connect with our consumers. We'd already launched and we opened our store maybe eight months later. Um, so what was great about that is it's been, a core, it's been really how we've centered our business, communicating with our customers. We've always said that we didn't actually go looking for customers, we just, decided that we want to make things that we love and hopefully others would love it too um, but what's really important in kind of keeping us in check is constantly having that open communication um, online with our consumers so from the smallest things like what color should our hard case be or getting feedback of an experience that might not be so positive the fact that we um, value that open line of communication I think has been one of the reasons why people feel connected to the brand. I like that. So instant in response, nyo. you can't let someone online hanging. So yes. masipag kayo online. Yes. <laughs> and not to no, because you do, you should leverage on it. You also had the power of celebrity, definitely to make some noise online. And and we leverage that. Yes. Yes. For Merly, nakahanap ka ng buyer dahil yung nga sa opisina mo, multi-purpose hall mo, sa susunod na barangay, ikaw mismo pinuntahan mo lahat yon, Tama ba? Yes po, ma'am. Paano pa maka-expand para mas dumami pa ang bumili sa'yo? Ano yung solution mo doon? Uh, ang solution ko po doon, through internet po, pero hindi pa ako ang gago kasi hindi pa ako marunong mag... Alam mo naman po yung kapanahon na namin, ako, wala pa yung mga... Internet. Internet na yun. Kahit laptop, hindi pa ako marunong. Sa totoo lang po, ang cellphone ko po, hindi pindot-pindot. Kasi sabi ko, yung pag-aaral ko doon, gagawa ko na lang ng banig. O, oh, yun. But, but, Kaya, but, anak ni Merle ang nag-aaral ng marketing. Opo. Oh, ah, nakapatap, nakapagtapos po yung anak ko sa isang university po sa Naga. Andito po siya ngayon, yun po ang tumutulong sa akin, tsaka yung kapatid ko po. Sila po ang magmamarket dito sa, Pilip sa Maynila. Ako lang doon po sa, sa amin sa probinsya, ako yung magpa-production. And sila po ang maghanap ng, ng buyer through internet. Ah, yun De po. Delegate. Kahit pa paano, may alam si Miss Merle at yung ibang may alam, wina-welcome mo. Like what Anne said, teamwork. And like uh, what Georgina said, we'll get back to Georgina on the importance of partners. 
Clar Clarissa, this is also different to get out your word. Not necessarily to look for consumers, but to look for people to jump on board for Teach for the Philippines. That's also a different way. You need to connect to your consumer. So how did you guys do it? Absolutely. We, um, just like George and Anne, we have a full um, social media recruitment. We also go in person, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, and we're attractive to young Filipinos that are looking for purpose-driven work. And we offer them a two-year two program. They join us. And through their two years, when they graduate um, and become, like I, I like to call them, teacherpreneurs, um, they've just spent two years doing their, their consumer market research. I mean, one of the big things about business is serving a need. And so now you've just spent two years on the ground understanding what the needs are um, across the 700,000 public school teachers and the 24 million public school students. And you come out with a priceless education about the Philippines and how the Philippines needs you uh, to engage with its future. Iangat nga naman natin ang public school. Bakit ba? They are the majority of our nation. That's why we have the private sector jumping in to make sure public school education is elevated. And yes, there are people, young ones out there, who do want that opportunity. And last but not least, Clarissa, Lizzie, you can earn money from this. Yes? Yes. Yes? Yes, of course. <laughs> That's we the point why we, we also want to get into business. Don't, but our, our graduates will then you know, open their own businesses or they actually join other um, NGOs and help um, move that forward. Yeah, I'm not denying. That's why we're here also. We want to make money. You can make money by giving back teaching to the public. Uh, Anne, let's get back to you. How can, again, you're like Georgina, the power of celebrity. So uh, with that out of the way, how can you connect to your consumer and make them buy your products? If without the power of celebrity. <laughs> you know, that's quite interesting um, because when we were first uh, conceptualizing BLK Cosmetics, I didn't want to be the face. Parang sabi ko, I want this to be my business. I want to learn. I want to be in the back side of it, the back hand of it. Um, but when we were talking to my partners, they were like, so gagastos pa tayo, kukuha tayo ng endorser. So added budget na naman yon. Iba pa din ang reach ng social media mo, which it's like marketing, instant marketing. So that's how we decided na, o oh, sige, let me test it. And then I just tweeted na parang, if I were to open my own uh, cosmetic line, bibili po ba kayo ng makeup ko? And then the replies on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram were, yes, 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 yes. So, para nga siyang ano, para, para ka kung naging mga online sellers sa Instagram na bili po kayo, ganyan. So, parang um, that's what really helped me because it's instant feedback, it's instant communication. And like even now, um, all of our buyers of BLK Cosmetics they take our lipsticks with them when they travel. So now we have a hashtag. We see BLK Travels, BLK around the world, where they take it to all different places around the world. So parang napaka-instant parang marketing, instant uh, communication, instant feedback. Kung meron silang hindi nagugustuhan, nalalaman namin. It also helps us know where BLK isn't available yet. So yun yung next target namin, which is actually really helpful for us because we have the likes of SM Beauty and Watsons to help the provinces um, get our products. And speaking of the digital age, iba na rin ang uh, buying power ng online communities such as Lazada, Zalora, Beauty Manila. We even have our own website where the sales have just rocketed. So um, online selling is actually going somewhere somehow. Thank you very much for that, Anne. And I like how, you know what? You know your strength is that don't be ashamed of it. Play to your strengths. Diba? If you already know, yes, I am the face. And yes, that's what made it work. Why? Own it. That's why it worked. Right? Play to your strengths, most definitely. Now as we shift gears to our bigger names, because the brands are now established, how can you keep that connection to your consumers? And as a last bit of advice for our uh, baby companies who are on the rise, very, very much on the rise, to scale it up. They're doing very well, all of them. As a last bit of advice, how do you level it up then? 
this is what's next for you while still being connected to your consumer. Ms. Nati. Uh, doon ang kumpisa kami, uh, wala na marketing. Ang ginawa namin, magandang service namin sa customer and gumawa kami ng magandang produkto ng foam. Ang um, mga customer namin, itanong namin, paano nila nalaman yung kumpanya namin, yung produkto namin, recommendation lang, maraming true mouth, uh, hanggang pati yung mga malalaking kumpanya, gumagawa ng kotse, yung mga car seats, uh, mga exported, mga guantes, garments, sapatos, hinanap kami. Kaya lalo lumakas yung negosyo namin. Kaya importante, uh, magandang servisyo natin sa customer at magandang produkto natin. Through word of mouth, quality of product, at yung mga hindi nyo aakalain, mapapasok nyo pala. Kasi nga, if you think foam, tama. Bed mattress. But no, you already said, car industry. San, san pa ba napasok yung mga different, uy, pwede rin foam dyan. Don't shut opportunities na pwede rin pala pasukin to. Sa totoo lang, noong early 1970s, lahat ng kotse gawa ng Pilipinas, lahat ng upuan gawa namin. There you go. More than bed mattress. So yung mga inuupuan nyo sa kotse, yun pala ang mga strength, ang strength dati ng Eurotex. Uh, pagpasok namin ng mga car seats, uh, sa tiwala sa amin ng mga Japanese company, um, nirecommend na nila gumawa rin kami ng mga car parks. Kaya ngayon, kasama kami sa programa ng gobyerno, um, lahat ng pag local assembler, at least gusto ng gobyerno 70% local made. Kaya tulungan natin yung gawang Pilipino. Thank you very, very much, Ms. Nati. And I love how you ended it with that note because as I go to Ms. Lizzie, this is where, again, Teach for the Philippines will help you level it up with the participation of the public sector. Yes. When she mentioned you got into government, you got into, uh, again, all these uh, local, who, who promote local. So this is where Teach for the Philippines also comes in to establish networks, yes? Yes. Yeah. And Isa, I'd just like to add that I... Clarissa and I don't feel left out in this conversation because when we set up Teach for the Philippines, we brought the same disciplines that are used in the private sector into the NGO sector because we felt that to deliver the best product, to be able to um, get to our audiences, we needed to use the business practices that all of these entrepreneurs use. We have a marketing department as well. We have a communications department. And we also, just to add to Clarissa's point, we have campus endorsers. So in different campuses in the Philippines, we've selected these young people. We actually look for people who are cool, very much like Tessie and Vicky and Nati and Anne and Georgina do and Merle, looking for endorsers people who will go out there and endorse what we're doing and help us recruit the best talent. So um, that I think when we talk about scaling up at Teach for the Philippines, we need government support. And networking. And, and networking, yes. And I think it's also about reputation. If local governments know that you're doing a good job, other local governments will want you. So I think it's, it's delivering a good product and then being a, supporting, your, in our case, supporting our product and mentoring them and then allowing the work to speak for itself. Thank you very much Thanks. for that, Ms. Lizzie. I, I love how Georgie, everybody on that other side is all ears. Yes, to level up. Ayan din ha, mga pink barangay level din yan. Huwag niyong, huwag niyong aanuhin yun. Huwag niyong babaliwalaan yun. Di ba? Again, go for the market, go for the network. And that's how you know you're up, scaling up. Miss Vicky, how to scale up and still connect with your audience. I already like how you gave credit to the likes of Anne and Georgina when you say, we throw ideas our way. But for them to scale up to your level, what kind of advice would you like to give our ladies? I think the advice I have for everybody is to get the best partner you could possibly have in the whole universe. Partners. Because, okay, so tatanin mo ako sino partner ko. Ang partner ko po talaga ang Dios. And ang alam ko, 
Kasi wala namang special talaga sa akin. Feeling ko, di ba? Sa school, I don't think anybody would have voted me most likely to succeed. But when you said, play to your weakness, I mean, to your strengths, ako naman, sinasabi ko, play to your weakness. So you're asking me how, kasi of course, as I get older, I started train ta lang po ako. Ang dami kong tigyawat. So, ang number one customer ko po, ako, di ba? Kasi wala ang... Pumunta ako sa ibang doktor, hindi, ko, hindi ako magam magamot. So I, I fixed myself. Ngayon, swerte ko, that's when God comes in. Ang first patient ko, wala pa ako kung karatula sa door ko. Ang pumasok na patient, Regine Velasquez. So although wala po akong um, celebrity, Dr. Vicky Bello lang ako, Regine Velasquez, napaka-celebrity niya. So pumasok siya sa klinik ko, chamba, di ba? Tapos, kasi narinig niya may bagong doktor, may bagong technology. So, pumasok siya, naggam, naggamot ko yung pimples niya sa likod kasi laging daming pimples. So, chamba na naman, hindi chamba to, I feel it's God. Sa, sa GMA, in-announce niya, thank you Dr. Vicky Bello for fixing my skin. So, ngayon, yung bar artista doon, sino si Dr. Vicky Bello? So, ganun, then dumami na ang pasyente. So, parang, Tapos mataba ako, ay di natuto ako mag maging magaling na liposuction kasi gusto ko sexy ang katawan ko. So marami rin mga tao na mataba din. So lahat sila pumupunta sa akin kasi mis you know, wala akong ginagawa halos sa klinik ko na hindi ko munang tinatry. So I believe, sinasabi nila sa Amerika, kunyari, turn lemons into lemonade. Sa Pilipinas po, turn calamansi to calamansi juice. So ganun dapat po. And the pinaka-importante, I mean, all of this, I agree with them. Kaya lang pinaka-importante talaga, besides having God as your partner, is gustong-gusto mo yung ginagawa mo para never mo na-feel na nag-work ka. Kaya hindi ako masyadong scientific po. Wala naman akong alam how to upscale. Basta dumadami lang ang pasyente kasi masaya sila kasi gumaganda sila, nagre-refer sila ng pasyente. So just always be the best you can be. And, you know, a lot of this digital, maganda lang yun. Pero pag hindi ka nagde-deliver ng promise na sinasabi mo, papagandahin mo yung tao, oh, masarap yung pili nuts mo, first time na sila magtatry, hindi na yan babalik. So, kailangan talaga yung skill set mo, be the best you can be. You actually echoed Miss Natty's customer service. You also echoed, again, networking, how, again, being connected with the right people, as Miss Lizzie mentioned. And Dr. Vicky, you did play to your strengths because you work on you. And only you would know yourself best. So, yes, thank you very, very much for that, Miss Vicky. And I want to end with Miss Tessie. Again, to really level it all up for someone who already worked from her way up had resources at also uh, her, at, uh, at her, and also from need, because it's also from need, how the bank came about having all the, these resources at her disposal. How will you then advise the likes of who would like to also level up? What is, uh, there's a lot, but how to simplify it or narrow it, narrow it down? Uh, business, uh, most businesses come from needs and, uh, and also opportunities. When you see opportunities and you have the need to do something, uh, look into it. Now, um, I can identify with them. We started also small. And, and most businesses need, uh, I mean, uh, they need perseverance, they need the passion. Well, even now, I do, some, I do things which are, uh, which may be not the, not the corporate management's uh, expectation, but I need to do it because I need to, uh, I, I need to have that passion alive in me. Um, and in, in, in business, look into the customer, what the customer needs, your quality or your service or your uh, quality of your products or your service. Always follow the customer. Now, the, if there are more customer, then you scale up and that is how we expand. So, uh, I, I, it's not a matter of we like to expand just because we, uh, we, you know, uh, we, we have the funds. It's just that it's because we follow the customer. So I, I think um, the power of entrepreneurship um, is very big. You start small, but in the future, you may, be, you may grow big. Then maybe uh, I'm on the retirement age. So pretty soon, you will see them 
doing things I'm doing. Because they're following in your footsteps and following your great no, advice. No, no. It's, um, and also as big business to the smaller businesses, the big business, how we, we are not uh, mentoring just like in classroom or as job coaching. We provide them opportunity to show, showcase their, uh, uh, their products and their talents. So those are part of mentoring. And so we have a lot of this uh, smaller businesses, medium businesses, who are, who are all working together. We all work together to provide a better, uh, a better assortment for the customer. Thank you very, very much. Shall we give our ladies a big, big round of applause for being so generous? Do we still have time for me to open the floor for questions? Yes? I just wonder, I've been selfish, and I hope I've been asking some of the questions you are asking yourselves that you'd hope I asked. So anybody have questions, I wonder? Take the chance! Bigatin ang ating mga panelists! Wala? Gusto lang ng picture? Huh? Okay, we do, yes? There are two very brave ladies who are going for the exit. Okay, they weren't going here. Okay. Anybody have questions? Uh, hi. Yes, Good morning. I hear a voice. Hi. I'm right in front. Good morning. My name is Mary. Um, I'm a digital marketer. So basically, I'm not yet on the business mind. Um, but basically, my main question is, um, you were talking about teaching Philippines or um, empowering students, right? So uh, the thing is, with the Philippines, the mindset of the education system is having industries, um, I, I'm sorry, is having them to become industrial employees. The system setup of the education is not really teaching us how to become independent or how we can actually become entrepreneurs. So in this program that, that you're creating, I think what you guys um, or, or pushing for or to teach basic subjects but I would really want to see if you would be able to bring entrepreneurship not just to 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 whoever can come to conventions but to actually bring it to the people at the schools because that's where every everyone would actually have the chance to have this mindset you guys, or like most everyone in the business sector, are able to think of, you know, we can make money, we can grow, but what about those people who don't have that chance, who, whose only idea of business is, is not really there yet? So if you have that platform, would you be able to, to do that and bring that to them? Because that's where the economy of the Philippines is going to matter. It's not just teaching I don't know if you get me I, I hope you do I, I, I kind of get where she's coming from yes would you like to take this Clarissa Lizzie yeah no thank you for that question it's an actual it's a very on-point question um, and the first thing I want to say is that teach for the Philippines is the longest standing partner of the Department of Education and a lot of times I think it's difficult to give respect and the, the due that the department is 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 deserve is, is deserves because the truth is the Department of Education is very well aware about the 21st century skills that, that we need to develop as a country. It's just that moving a system of 24 million kids is gonna take some time. How do we contribute to that? When you talk about entrepreneurship skills and you break that down pedagogically to students, what you're talking about is critical thinking, the ability to think critically. And we teach that through the methodology of our teaching. We run inquiry-based classrooms where we encourage questions, and we work mostly in the public elementary school. So if at a young age we are teaching our kids how to ask questions and teaching our teachers how to be facilitators, what we're honing is the ability to critically think, which will then lead them to be, hopefully, um, entrepreneurs or business people that are critical thinking bosses as well as critical thinking employees. That would be the key skill in the 21st century because I don't, with all of the new innovations that are coming up, teaching anything static right now is not going to serve you well in 25 years. I Lizzie, hope that answers your question. Um, it does, yeah. Thank you. Lizzie, you would like to add to that? Uh, okay. Uh, 
uh, Georgina, I'll quickly say to uh, Clarissa's point that one of the things that we work on in, with our teachers, that they go into the classroom and that they create a classroom where people recover a sense of possibilities. And I think this is what all the people on this panel share, that to begin to think about being an entrepreneur, you have to believe in yourself and you have to believe that there are possibilities out there available to you. And that is very key. It may sound like a soft skill, but it's really the key to opening yourself to the world and to the possibilities there are out there. So thank you for that question. Thank Definitely. you. Definitely. It's not just about reading, writing, or arithmetic, which is still the basis. I get how you mean education is still industrial in nature. And yet with these empowered uh, young professionals, who are graduates from uh, colleges who are under the Teach for the Philippines program. And yes, opportunities are out there. When you ask questions like, how can I, how can I, how can I, right? How can I? Why do we have Miss Murley on the panel? 2,000 pesos, sari sari store. Don't say you can. Don't say you can. Because lalo lalo na kayo who are probably already connected in your own colleges, in your own high schools, you have more opportunities. That's why we got Go Negosyo right there also. There are so much opportunities and that's why we are here. We have another question. Yes. Hi. Um, here's the question. Is how much, uh, to be a successful entrepreneur, how much an franchise fee in any kind of business? that you want to get? Is, is that Please repeat. Know, how much to get into the business? Is how much? Is that the franchise business. I, oh, how much to get? Oh. Nako, you have to get in touch with the franchise. I guess, yeah, franchise. Yeah, yeah it's outside. <laughs> Would you like to talk to our presidential Maybe. advisor for entrepreneurship? <laughs> Maybe, you know, well, yeah. I think of the franchise business, uh, they can look into the franchise associations, but I will have to tell you, business is born out of needs. So it depends upon what you need to do a certain business. Like for Merle, she has very small uh, capital. She can do it. She doesn't need mentor. It's because of needs. Thank you, Ms. Tessie. Wait, we have our own presidential advisor to answer that question. Lalo na pag-franchise opportunities. Uh, the, just outside, there are about 150 mentors. Well, they've started already, so you can ask those questions. Anybody who has questions about anything you want, love life, you can go outside. <laughs> Thank you for that, PA Joey. Uh, we got to wrap it up. This is our last question. I'm sorry. Yes? Nako. Uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Hi, I'm Dana Ray Sitars. I'm from the University of Santa Tomas. And I, uh, last September, my friends and I started a business. It's called Magiting Filipinas. And what we do is um, we started from a, uh, from a clothing business into a social enterprise where we create um, our merchandise and we teach people the art of baybayin, the pre-Hispanic text of the Philippines. And from baybayin, we want to um, expand some more. But um, when we started the business, it was only a business project. So we didn't really have a working capital, but what we had was um, enough money for the production. And now the question is, since we want to uh, really um, ha be able to get more market share, to be really be able to share advocacy with more people, should, is it uh, time for us, since we're students who couldn't shell out as much money? Um, do you think, um, since you guys started your own businesses, do you think um, it's time for us to get investors of our own so that we could um, be able to reach more people, to be able to share the advocacy with more people? Hi. <laughs> Thank you. I, if I'm not mistaken, you're asking where to take it next. Yes. Because for me, I, as I'm making chica now with Sila Miss Tessie, ang dami nyo lang ginawa in a short span of time. Would you, am I right? Yeah. Where can she take it next from clothing to bye-bye to expatch? Ang dami. <laughs> Actually, it's bye-bye it for the which we put into clothing so that uh, more people would be able to see it, to learn from the clothing itself. Ah. And then be in interested, be curious, and ask us to teach them since we're going to be starting our workshop soon. So, yun. Uh, I think entrepreneurship does 
uh, the basic entrepreneurship uh, does not need uh, does not need somebody to push you. You know, so I always say that it it depends on the needs. Now, if you want to uh, sell your items in a store, you can approach a store. If you want it digital, you can do digital. The um, the opportunities are endless. Um, when Follow we... your customer. That's what Ms. Tessie also said. If your customers are asking for more workshops than the clothing, maybe that's your customer. Oh. Um, when, how would we know if we're supposed to be accepting investors already? Accepting what, sorry? Investors. Well, we've been Investors. Having... Wow, that's always a good thing, yes? You can always uh, approach our SM uh, office for that. I mean, it's open to anybody who wants to uh, sell to us because we need new products. And, you know, on the digital, uh, you have these two ladies on the digital. They, you can sell it through them. As Anne said, she's an online seller now. Thank you. Very congratulations, though. It seems like you're on the road. You're on Thank the way. You. Thank you. Wow. So and that's what this is all about. We want all of you to be on that path, on that road to your own entrepreneurship journey. So yes, shall we please give our panelists a big, big round of applause? It's been my absolute pleasure to be your moderator for this one, and I hope you learned lo loads, everybody. To Georgina, Merle, Clarissa, Anne, Miss Natty, Miss Lizzie, Doctora Vicky, and Miss Tessie, may I ask you please uh, come forward first for a photo opportunity? Thank you. We would like to invite our presidential advisor, uh, Ms. for entrepreneurship, PA Joey Concepcion, to please join the photo. Met Miss Alice Eduardo as well. Please do join the photo. Sama-sama na tayo sa tagumpay. Pilipinas ngayon na ang oras. Tayo yung masenso na. Let's go Pinoy. Tara magnegosyo na. Let's go Pinoy.